Hey guys, Chef Andrea here, and we are talking about olive oil in these podcasts. So the Q that I get, Q&A with Chef A, well, by the way, if you're new here, welcome. Uh, you're probably catching me on the YouTube channel, and we're really happy that you're here with us. Um, if you're a Gumroad sub subscriber, thank you for that as well. Um, and your recipes, Gumroad subscribers, um, are really cool uh, going with this olive oil um, collection. A lot of great recipes. So, um, okay, so here's the story. The question I get about olive oil is um, how to know, how do I know that what I'm buying at the grocery store is actually good olive oil? I think that uh, we've all gotten snippets, right? Little bits of information here and there um, that olive oil isn't always what it says it is. Like it'll say it's extra virgin olive oil from Italy, but is that really true? I think we've all heard little bits about that, right? So I have another podcast that's available called Olive Oil, The Scandal, and that um, features a book called Extra Virginity that I highly recommend if you really want to know the deep dive into where the um, mislabeling and um, that sort of information started to really come to light. Uh, it is this particular journalist who wrote this book that really got the word out there. So as a consumer, we've heard snippets that maybe what we're buying at the grocery store isn't really olive oil or is it extra virgin when it says it is, yada, yada, how do we know? So uh, what I learned from reading Extra Virginity, uh, I learned a lot, but a little snippet that I'm going to share with you right now that makes, for me, shopping for olive oil feel a little bit safer um, is that essentially what the safest bet is if you find an olive oil that is a product of, so the olives are from, it was produced in, so the olives were pressed, and it was bottled uh, in all the same place of origin. So the olives are grown in Italy, pressed in Italy, the oil is bottled in Italy, and then it is shipped out, okay? So one country of origin or one region and everything is from that specific space from growing to pressing to bottling to shipping. Um, what I understand about mislabeling and kind of convoluted oils and things that may not be what they seem is the more they travel, the less guaranteed they start to become. So if it is a product of Italy that was bottled in Spain and distributed through Greece, may not be exactly what it says that it is. The more people who get their hands on the product throughout the process, the more likely the product is a little bit of something and a little bit of something and a little bit of something and then labeled vaguely and sent out. So um, again, look for the video. Um, I think it's called um, The Scandal. And that book, is it's a short read and it's an excellent read. You could look at some articles online. So what's available at the grocery store that just feels safe? How do I get there? So I hope that through maybe reading that book, maybe just watching these videos, uh, you will get comfortable with the concept of looking a little deeper into these labels and seeing what they really say. So I've got a couple with me that I bought at our local grocery store. Now in um, Florida, the grocery store chain here that's the most popular is Publix. We have Winn-Dixie, Fresh Market, Walmart. This brand of olive oil, I have found at every one of those places. And so this is California Olive Ranch. And in thinking, in that line of thinking, you know, produced, grown, produced, and bottled in one place, at least eliminates the chance that a, lots of hands have been on it and it might have been mixed with other things. So this particular one is 100% California extra virgin olive oil. And it's got lots of cool labels on it, non-GMO, organic, et cetera. 100% California. And so what this is, is a cooperative of multiple olive growers throughout the state of California that bring their, their olives together, is my understanding, to press and create this. And it's bottled right there in California. So there we go, right? That just follows our, chucks our little boxes. Safe bet. I love this olive oil for if I'm going to make a vinaigrette, so kind of a flavored salad dressing, this goes in it. If I'm going to fry or scramble my eggs, which I do in olive oil, this is what I use in the pan. Um, if I'm going to do a little shallow fry of uh, chicken or pork or something that's slightly breaded, this is what I would use for that. So this olive oil works really well for all of your sort of, it's great to just eat like in a vinaigrette, like I said. 
Um, but for kind of low heat cooking, so anything that's going to be around medium range, um, olive oils don't do very well typically at very high heat, but that's another, another question, le another lecture. So California Olive Ranch, this is my go-to. And by the way, this is my go-to. We use it here at A Chef's Cooking Studio constantly, and this is what's sitting next to my range at my house, this exact deal, okay? So same company also produces this guy, and if you read it down here, so we're looking for our 100% California. Okay, wait a minute. Global blend. <gasps> Look at the countries. Okay, still all right. Here's what's happening. Argentina, Chile, Portugal, California. Wait, wait, wait. You said one country of origin. I think one country of origin for all things is a really safe bet. However, if you find a producer that you've got some faith in their labeling, some faith in the product that they are providing, head to their website and do a little research. The bottom line is that this is also a cooperative of growers from Argentina, Chile, Portugal, and California. All of the, my understanding is the Argentina, Chile, and Portugal um, olives or oil is brought to California to be blended with our California oil, and then it's bottled and packaged there. Um, produced by the California Olive Ranch Company. So there you go. I trust the company, so I, I trust what's happening in this bottle. And I've used this one in the 100% California interchangeably. They both seem fine to me. I've had no complaints and no problems. The truth is my grocery store sometimes has one or the other, and I grab whichever one is there. Sometimes they have both. I will say, if they have both, I tend to get the 100% California. I think that's just because it's just, I don't know, you know, America. I don't know. It's from my own country. I love it. Um, but what can I say? It's up to you. Maybe you want to branch out and do something more global. But I, I really like this one. And again, I find it at Walmart, um, Winn-Dixie, Publix, Fresh Market. I found it at all the major ones. So there's that one. Okay. Now, here's another one. This is also I bought just at the basic grocery store. And I actually have seen this one at Walmart too. So this is an interesting one. So this is an organic uh, extra virgin olive oil, first cold press, Tunisian. And it is imported to Houston, Texas, and it is produced in Tunisia. And here's what I like about this one. This little barcode, the little note next to it says, scan me to trace my full journey from orchard to you. Okay. And then see all this gorgeous labeling down here? That's why I'm happy about this bottle. These guys are telling you, we already know that you've read the book Extra Virginity and you've done your research and you know that if it's going to be exported out of Tunisia into Houston, Texas, has anything happened to it along the way? Could it possibly have been blended part way, et cetera? And so they're telling you to scan this and you'll see its exact journey from press bottle over to, um, well, distributed out to the U.S. through that Houston company. But so um, I love that. That's exactly what they're trying to do is just say, look, we understand that you guys are educated about these olive oils now. And so we're offering you a 100% Tunisian product. We're guaranteeing that that's what's in this bottle. And you can even scan this to follow its journey and see. Um, again, I use this one for homemade vinaigrettes and salad dressings. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I cook with it at medium to medium low heat, things like that, sort of kind of in place of, I don't know, vegetable oil or corn oil or something like that. Um, I use this. Of course, for deep frying, we're in a different story. Now, another thought for you. Now, of course, I'm speaking to people in the United States right now. If you live globally, you've got lots of options too. But the other thought is you can just take a look at what's available regionally. You might be surprised. Um, Right now, there is a really cool um, olive growing kind of surge happening in my home state of Georgia, which I think is super exciting. Um, I love that concept. And, you know, it turns out, I think if you guys watched my, uh, if you're Gumroad subscribers, I did a little bonus recipe where I geeked out with you and showed you my favorite book in my entire book collection, which is The World Atlas. So this is my favorite book in my entire book collection. This is why I said it's a geek moment. And the reason it's my favorite book is because this one shows us the topography. So this is Alaska. You can see all those mountains. 
very little green grasslands. Topography. I love looking up the to topography of countries um, because I can learn a lot about the food that's going to be produced region to region based on the topography. So anyway, I digress. Here's the thing. It turns out that if you look at the Northern Hemisphere and where parts sit in relation to the equator, the climate of Georgia in the United States is very similar to the olive growing regions throughout Spain and Italy. So um, kind of cool, right? And listen, this is really funny. I actually have a chef who was a mentor um, in culinary school and his son-in-law spent a little time in airport jail. I don't know that he had to spend the night, but he spent a little time in airport jail. He was smuggling in olive plants from, I don't know if he had been in Italy or Spain or what, but he thought he was going to bring in olive plants. Can you believe that? And they busted him at the airport and said, no way. <laughs> anyway, but I think he'd gotten wind of this same concept that uh, speaking climate wise, you can grow olives in this region really well. And nobody had ever tried it basically was the concept. So now they're growing all these beautiful olives in um, Georgia. And I love Georgia olive oils. I've had um, oils from two different companies. This is one, um, or the uh, Olive Orchards of Georgia. Sorry about that glare, but you can see it. Olive Orchards of Georgia. You know what's interesting to me about olive oil from Georgia is that without question, every time I taste it, I can pick up a little hint of pecan. And that makes sense because a lot of these orchards are going in where pecan uh, trees were once, gr um, once grown, growing. Anyway, they taste like pecans. <laughs> So if you want to get into the coolness of sort of tasting different olive oils, even where it's from can have an impact on the flavor. There's a lot about that in the book, Extra Virginity as well. So definitely check out that podcast. Um, the book is, it's a great one. So uh, there's another thought is to just look regionally. And then the last question that I get is what about all those um, specialty gourmet stores that have popped up that have all the flavored oils? There's peach oil and lime oil and coconut oil, um, all these different flavors. And then they show you how to blend it with all these flavored vinegars and you, um, you know, you do little tastings of. Here's the thing about that. Um, I would speak to the person that's running the franchise nearest you and ask them to tell you about the base oil that they're using. And I'm just going to leave that there. Um, they're either going to be incredibly informed and very proud of it or less so. And, and that'll be up to you to decide. We, um, I did, I spent a little time in one, um, that I noticed what was happening is that there were the flavored oils kind of on one side of the room, and then they had three um, like metal urns of first press, extra virgin, single batch country of origin oils that were non-flavored. Um, so they're obviously carrying some really high quality oils in there. What they're using as their base for their flavored oils, I simply can't answer that question, um, but they should be able to, right? So check with them. The other thing I'll mention is small delis. We just had some customers in for a class that live in New York City, and they told me that they have a Greek um, grocery near their home and um, that he brings in first pressed, really small batch, gorgeous Greek olive oil. So like that's a really cool idea too. If you have, you know, an ethnic deli near you, you could see what, or, or shop, you could see what they're storing, uh, storing, stocking that maybe has come from their country of origin. And the answer to all of that is ask, ask, ask. People, listen, if you call um, the Olive Orchards of Georgia and ask them to tell you a little bit about their olive oil, plan to be on the phone for a while. They're proud of this, you know, and they will answer every question that you have about it. So um, I think that's always a good sign too and an easy way to shop as well. But the four olive oils that I've just shown you all came from basic grocery stores. The um, Georgia olive oil, that might have come directly from their website. I know that when my mom still lived in Atlanta, we did spot Georgia olive oils at even just some of the fresh markets and stuff there. I don't know that there are at all of them. And I haven't been in our fresh market in a long time. Um, so I'll have to go check it out and see. But check it out. Take a look. Okay. So one last note on buying olive oils at home and then or buying olive oils um, without going online or something like that. I'm gonna throw this little nugget out there to you. I read an article one time about the foods that are available in those kind of mixed merchandise, big box stores like TJ Maxx, Marshalls, 
home goods. You get what I'm talking about. I know there's a, a, a version of those in Canada because I watch knitting podcasters from there and they mention that type of store up there. I don't know if there's any in the UK, but I know they have something. I can't remember what it's called. It starts with a C um, that's up there. It's the same idea. Okay. As far as the ones in the United States, if you do a little Google search on your phone, should I buy food at home goods? You know what I mean? Just do a base Google search. You'll come across this article that I read. And what the article said is that the specialty gourmet items that are in those stores, check them out, try them. So I think for some of us, what we always wonder, the skeptic in us says, was this like, did this fall off a truck? I mean, is that how it ended up here? Or is this going to expire tomorrow? Or has this company disbanded and it's totally discontinued because it was terrible? You know, we're skeptical. We wonder. What I read in this article was that actually, typically what's there, the reason you haven't seen it in other places is it's new products that are being launched. And what's happening is an importer, let's say for good olive oils, or a specialty popcorn company has opened up. Uh, where they're going to actually sell their product, the grocery stores they're going to choose around the country or in one region is a pretty limited cross culture to get out there, right? But if they reserve a portion of their pre-launch or their early launch of their products and get them to this type of store, they're going to get them in hands of people who would have never found them otherwise. And what it does is it sort of launches their mail order, their website order, um, options from people who might not have otherwise ever found their product. So that's the synopsis of that scenario. But I think that's interesting to know. And I do love checking out the, the wacky food. That's where you get the best candy over there. Do you guys buy candy there? Oh my gosh. They always have these trippy candies from all over the world. Um, and you know, you're always hungry when you shop in there. The only thing I'll say is that every once in a while, I've bought a snack there that I have loved so much and never been able to find again. So that was like, you know, you would totally have to go mail order it from that point on. So you can get addicted to their stuff. But check them out. And I found some cool olive oils there. And I definitely do some label reading there too. Just double check what it is. But everything I've ever bought olive oil wise from those places, I've been really happy with. Um, so there's that. Next question that I'm going to answer in a separate video is about specialty oils. I mentioned these oils are ones that I cook with and ones that I make salad dressings with and things like that. Um, there are some kind of higher end, more expensive specialty oils, and uh, those I use a little bit differently. So I'm going to talk in my next video about the olive oil hunter, uh, where I get those specialty oils and how I use them. Hey, if you are new to the YouTube channel, welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. If you are a first timer here, click like and subscribe. It super duper helps us out. Um, if you are interested in PDF printable recipes that go along with all of these video series, you can find those over on Gumroad. Uh, the Gumroad link is on my website, achefs.com. Click podcast and it'll take you straight into Gumroad. Uh, that is a paid subscription, but it's really reasonable. And every month's um, podcast drop, which is anywhere between three and four videos, also includes PDFs of all the recipes. So you can print those out and try some recipes at home. But if you want to just hang out on YouTube with us, that's cool too. I'm glad that you're here and we'll look forward to seeing you for the next video. Uh, check out the scandal video. It talks a lot about the book that I was mentioning. And next up, we'll talk about uh, the olive oil hunter. I'm a big fan. All right, guys, I hope you are having a delicious day and I look forward to cooking with you soon.